Welcome back to the Calyx Growing Things Gardens. Today we're going to demonstrate how you can produce your own vegetable seedlings for your kitchen garden. And while these steps we're going to show you, while we're using vegetables to demonstrate the steps, these steps apply to a wide range of seeds, whether they're flowers, herbs, or some fruit trees. So stick around and we'll show you how to produce healthy seedlings such as these. Here are three reasons why you should want to grow your own seedlings. First, you save a lot of time. The time you'll take to go to the garden center to look for what you want and then it's not there or the quality is poor. So when you grow your own seedlings, you will grow what you want, when you want, so that you can maintain your own crop rotation cycle. A second very good reason that I find is that you save a lot of money because it is much cheaper to grow your own seedlings. And the third, the quality. If you follow the steps we show and you look after your seedlings, you're going to be producing healthier seedlings than, than you're likely to get at your garden center. Some crops are best sown directly into the soil. And these include crops such as cucumbers, corn, and a few others that you'll see on the screen. However, Others such as tomatoes, sweet peppers, cabbages, etc., are best sown in seed beds or containers and transplanted into the area in which they will grow until maturity. So let's get started. And the first thing to do is to assemble the materials. And we're talking about the containers, the seedling mix, and the seeds that we, have, we are going to be working with today. First, let's look at containers. There are many options. Select the option that is suitable to your conditions, so what you have available and the number of seedlings that you are going to grow. It could be as simple as a disposable cup. Make sure you put holes in them though. This is if you're just doing a few smaller containers. The best option is a six pack, more convenient but I've been having difficulties finding six packs in my garden center lately. So we've had to impro in improvise. The, in terms of sealing flats, as they're called, the options, I have three options here on the table. This is called a 120 cell tray. That's because there are 120 cells. The cells are much, are rather small. That limits your choices. I use these only if I'm doing a lot of smaller seedlings such as lettuce. This 72 cell flat I find to be the most versatile for most of the items you're likely to grow in your home garden. It produces a medium sized seedling. If you're growing larger, if you want a larger seedling, especially if it's a fruit tree, you can use a tray such as this which has a depth of about six inches so this gives you a much larger seedling but this is really not necessary for vegetables so the one i use if i can find a six pack i use if not i tend to use a 72 cell tree these cups i use when i am up potting when i'm taking a transplant and putting it into a pot for a larger seedling so the main consideration with the containers is make sure that they whatever it is all of these have holes in the bottom for drainage and as well you may reuse your containers but if you do make sure you wash them with soap and sanitize them before you reuse. Once you've selected your container the next step of course is to fill it with an appropriate seedling mix. I find it much more convenient because of the small amount of seedling mix you require it's much more convenient to purchase a pre-packaged seedling mix which you are guaranteed is sanitized and it has um, the right mixture of ingredients for seedlings which generally is a nice free draining mix with little or no nutrients added. Um, labels you need to keep records I have my handy record keeping book which because you're likely to be propagating quite a range of items you need to keep them separate in your records. I'm going to be demonstrating 
planting of four varieties for vegetables today pak choy cabbage cauliflower and tomato the cabbage the cauliflower and the pak choy are all the same family so the con the conditions are similar and tomato the ever popular tomato we will also include in our demonstration today when you mix in different types of seeds in a tray you have to make sure that at least the days to germination are about the same these that i've selected the cabbage pak choy cauliflower and tomato they will all germinate they're expected to germinate within a week or so let me just remind you that a lot of the information that you need once you're purchasing seeds at a farm store the information is on the back of the pack as to the spacing the days to the germination the general growing conditions as well as the quality all of these uh, vegetables the cabbage the pak choy cauliflower and tomato have essentially same planting requirements in terms of days to germination they germinate between four to eight days and the depth of planting is uh, about a quarter inch so i have made the indentations about a quarter inch I've left out a, a blank line for to avoid the mix-up at any point in time. And the other thing that you need to be familiar with is the size of your seeds. All of these seeds are relatively small. So, and because in a backyard situation, depending on the size of the family, you don't want to produce 30 seedlings when you only need six. So this information on this pack says that it, when it was tested about four months ago it had 90 percent germination so let's assume it has at least 70 percent germination so really if you want one seedling you really don't have to put more than two or three seeds one thing i don't like to see is when a when too many seedlings come up the overcrowding because all of those seedlings are weakened as a result of the competition in that so the cabbage seeds, though small, are easy to manage, not like some others that we like, um, Kalaloo, for example. But this seed size is easy enough to manage and try not to put more than two or three into the space, into the hole. The tomato seed is light and flat and harder to manipulate than the cabbage seeds, but the pink coating is a fungicide treatment on the tomato so that will help in protecting the seed from seed soil borne fungus especially ones that cause damping off covering them is now a very simple activity you just close up the hole that you had made at the start just tap them over and you would notice that the medi medium is quite damp of course, the first thing I would have done was dampen the media so that after you've sown, you don't have the problem of the seeds floating to the top on dry medium. You notice I had left these as markers so I wouldn't mix them up as I am labeling them. There they go. And at this point, the medium is very damp, but it would not hurt to give it a nice little spritz at the top to close up any airspace that may be around the seeds. I'm just gonna set up three pots so we can compare them as they grow. So we've done the same procedures in the pots. I've planted just three, I've left out the pak choy. Don't need any pak choy now. So we have the tomato, the cabbage and the cauliflower. And we just um, rigged up something here to show that in the event you don't have a nursery. Uh, protection as simple as um, wire mesh over a base. We have two layers of protection here, the, the plastic against heavy dung pores and the shade cloth in the event you don't have a tree under which to nestle it. Once the seedlings germinate, they can be removed and allowed to grow in full sun. Be on the lookout for ants or rats or birds that feed on seeds as well as slugs and snails. Also, Check the seedling trays daily to make sure the mixture does not dry out. And remove weaker seedlings from cells with multiple germination. 
The seedlings are now two weeks old and they have made excellent growth. So I actually started the fertilizing about three, four days ago. So in the case of seedlings that should be ready for transplanting between four and five weeks, three applications of fertilizer are usually sufficient. A safe rate of application is one teaspoon in a gallon of water. So this is 20-20-20 with micronutrients. 20-20-20 meaning 20% nitrogen, 20% phosphorus, and 20% potassium. Now, you could just sprinkle the seedlings lightly. If you have a container, it is more efficient to fill that container with the fertilizer solution and just place your seedling tray. Make sure that it is there is sufficient water in the tree that the seedling actually rests on the water. Leave it there for about 15 minutes. That way you have bottom feed of the fertilizer. The entire seedling plug will be, will be able to absorb the fertilizer. And this goes for any container. It doesn't have to be a seedling tree, but you can also place your pots in there for 10, 15 minutes. It will suck it up. And as I say, that way you are sure of even application of your fertilizer throughout the rooting zone. If your seedlings are growing in a pot or a larger container than the seedling flat, when they're at this stage, it is you can come in and transplant, take up a plug, try not to disturb too much. The roots are already coming through at this um, what about an inch and a half into the soil and transplant into larger pots from which they will continue to grow or in which they will continue to grow. And you will have a strong, sturdier seedling. So that's a recommendation. If you plant it in a, if you sow several seeds in one container, it is best That's when they get to the two, when they send out their second true leaf that you up pot in a, larger container where they will grow faster, stronger, and healthy. So this is our collection of lovely seedlings. It's been four and a half weeks. Uh, we have gone through the stages of planting, caring for them. And we, those that we are potted, you can see just um, for, by example, this one remained in the seedling tray. And this one was uh, potted about two weeks ago. And you see that you have produced, we have produced a much sturdier a bigger seedling once we have potted it so it's the same period of time this is a four and a half week seedling so is that this can remain the one in the pot can remain for another week or two and get much larger whereas a seedling such as this should not be kept for any any longer it will it will suffer tomatoes should not stay in a cell container for longer than five weeks similarly remember we sowed several seeds in a larger container and allowed them to grow and these seeds are looking healthy and vigorous growth etc but the problem you may have at transplanting from a bigger container is now what you have to do is essentially come and take out a seedling in a clump and this one came out pretty easily but uh, there are times when this root ball will shell out and you are going to have seedling shock as a result. So I find it better and we're recommending that if you have the small the containers that as we demonstrated when these seedlings are about two two and a half weeks you put them in individual containers these can grow as I keep saying for a longer period of time you'll have a bigger seedling and when you're ready to transplant they would you just turn it upside down this this one the roots are all at the bottom ready to go so there will be little or no shock when you transplant from a container such as this. So if you're dealing with a few seedlings, it's always better to pot them at two and a half weeks into an individual container and get a larger, healthier seedling. So these seedlings have been properly hardened off, which means in the last week or so, they have been taken out of any protective covering that they were in and gradually uh, exposed to full sunlight. Also, we have reduced the watering so that the plants will suffer less shock when they are put out in the elements. And the final stage in your seedling propagation exercise is to plant. And this is just a quick shot of the tomatoes which we 
planted a moment ago. I hope this motivates you to grow your own seedlings. And I wish to thank Yvette Batson for prompting us to do this seedling demonstration at this time. It has given us another set of cabbage and tomatoes, which we very well needed in our crop rotation. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, please do so. And don't forget for lots more information on plant propagation, including how to propagate from stem cuttings, from grafting, etc. Check our book on plant propagation, which is available on Amazon. So until next time, this is Thelma from the Calix Growing Things Garden saying bye-bye.